Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sound. Speech. Vibrations in the air that come from one point and reach our ears. We translate those sounds into words. These words give us a message. Even certain sounds put together help us communicate. A police car drives by your house. You recognize the distinct pattern of sound waves immediately. Humans can perceive sound waves between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Above or below, that we can't hear. But that doesn't mean that they're not there, those sounds. Not only does sound give us the ability to communicate, but it can also do things. If you have a glass and you create a sound with the same frequency as that glass, you'll shatter it. If you bounce sound waves between two objects and place a little styrofoam ball in the center, the sound going back and forth will actually hold it up. It'll cause it to levitate, if you can imagine. Until recently, sound levitation wasn't very useful, but scientists have discovered not only how to make objects levitate, but how to actually move them. Sound is a form of communication. It remains whether we can hear it or not. It can even affect the physical world that we live in. Now, metaphors for God abound in the Bible, like God is a rock or a mother hen. But what about God as sound, as words, communication, a sound we sometimes hear and sometimes don't, a wave that has the power to move our physical world? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, John writes at the beginning of his gospel. And the writer of Hebrews says, Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days, these days that Jesus was in and that we are in too, he has spoken to us by the Son. Jesus is called the word, and so God must be interested and coming to us through the word, the sound, the wave. In my early 20s, I got involved in a Christian organization called Young Life. It happened one day when I was skateboarding around my neighborhood in Burnaby. There was a large parking lot by a tennis court, which was usually empty, but on this particular day, I noticed a bunch of ramps set up and some teenagers skateboarding around. I decided to go over and see what was happening and ended up talking to one of the adults that, that looked like the leader. After that, it was all history. We would meet these kids every Sunday, set up the ramps, skateboard, have fun, goof around, and spend time talking about God, Jesus, and what they thought about that whole crazy thing. Each year we would also go on a week-long trip with other Young Life skateboard clubs from around BC in an event called Road Rage. Part of it involved skateboarding at various parks and places like Kamloops and Cologne in the interior, and the other part of it had us at a camp over in Penticton. It was at this camp that a very interesting event happened around the sound of God. God speaking. At the end of each day, all of the kids in the camp would, would gather for a talk. On one night, the presenter was speaking about how God can talk to us. He suggested that God talks to us in, in a lot of ways. Sometimes it's through others and their actions or even their words. Sometimes it's through the Bible. And sometimes God even talks to us verbally in our minds. Kids were curious. They were all invited to find a quiet place outside by the leader, ask God to speak to them, and then sit in silence and wait for an answer. Afterwards, 
As we sat in our cabin as a a group, the kids had a lot to say about God speaking to them. But one kid named Jordan stuck out in particular. I decided to sincerely ask God to talk to me, he said, as everyone listened intently. I went outside and sat on a rock in a quiet place. And I waited. I waited. I waited. I waited, but nothing happened. The other kids sat silent. I guess God doesn't want to talk to me, Jordan said disappointedly. My heart broke in half. Here was a young teenager from a broken home asking the God of the universe to say something to him, and all he got was silence. I don't know if you've had a similar experience as Jordan. Perhaps you've longed to hear God and nothing. Perhaps you've asked God to help in certain situations and and no response, no reply. Perhaps you've decided that the word has stopped speaking. Whatever the case, there is often a sense that God isn't really much of a talker anymore. Not in these days, at least. That God is silent in so many areas of our lives and the tragedies that are happening all throughout the world. The lack of response on God's part can lead us feeling alone and abandoned and and maybe even hopeless. Because without God's word, is there really a future? Scholars surmise that Hebrews, which we just read, was written to a congregation that that felt hopeless and abandoned. Hopeless and abandoned by the Word, by God. They were getting tired and they needed a word from God. Anything to affirm that the direction that they were taking, where they were going, even to confirm that God was still around. God still even existed. And so at the very beginning of the the letter, we find, long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son. God spoke in the past. And God continues to speak now and in the future through Jesus and through the Spirit, Jesus' Spirit in us. In fact, He sustains all things with His powerful Word, the sound that we need. The words of Jesus and the the acts of the Word, Jesus, sustain us and the world. Why wouldn't we want to hear them? The other day, one of the girls in our tween group, which is for kids 8 to 12 years old, asked a pointed question on the first day that relates. She ran up to me as we were getting ready to get started and said out loud, How do we know that God exists? We can't see him or hear him. Wham. Welcome to the beginning of tween group. It caught me off guard. And so as always, when you don't know the answer, you're supposed to ask a question back. I decided to ask the question to the group. And they told about answered prayers, guardian angels, and God talking to them in their minds. They were full of ways that the word, the sound of God was moving towards them and actually doing things still. But what we missed, and what I missed, and often do miss, was that Jesus is the best communication or revelation of God that we know. He is the reflection of God's glory, the exact imprint of God's being, not a replica of, but the exact imprint. Jesus is God saying something. Jesus is God speaking. Just as speech is an active interrupter of that silence, a disturbance of the stillness caused by the force of sound waves, so Jesus is an active intrusion by God into our world. 
says author Thomas Long. Jesus is God's movement towards us. Jesus is God understood. My friends, God is never silent. I think it's just that we have a hard time listening. Amen.